Greetings and welcome to part 2 of the O-Level Revision Guide to Linear Law. Today, we will be looking at how to construct a linear law graph. The success criteria for today will be for students to be able to transform a non-linear equation into a linear law graph with appropriate functions for the big X and the big Y axis. Next would be to state the expressions for the gradient and big Y intercept. Lastly, it would be to be able to construct a linear law graph and use that graph to determine the unknown constants from the gradient and the big Y intercept of the graph. Let's do a quick recap. We have learned in the previous episode how to find the gradient and big Y intercept of a given linear law graph and transform a linear graph into a non-linear equation by substituting the found gradient and big Y intercept together with the functions for the big Y and big X into the equation big Y equals to m big X plus c. Before I go into today's lesson, I would like to first connect this to what you already might be doing for O-level physics. A common physics experiment is the pendulum experiment that is used to measure the gravitational acceleration of the Earth. Usually in this experiment, we'll connect a bob to a string and attach this to a retort stand. We vary the length of the string and we swing this pendulum to measure the period of each oscillation. Using the equation t is 2 pi times the square root of l over g, we can take out the square root of l and we can transform this into a non-linear equation, which is a linear law graph, such that the big Y is t and the big X is the square root of l. The gradient of this would be 2 pi over square root g and the big Y intercept will be zero. After repeating the experiments by changing the variable L, we will have a set of observed results T. We will also need to add an additional row of square root of L in the table. Then we can construct the axis T against square root of L, then plot the points in and draw a best fit line shown here in green. By finding the gradient of this line, m, this will be 2 pi over square root of g. Then we can find the value of the gravitational acceleration g by using the formula 2 pi over the gradient that we have measured, m, and square the whole thing. This is a standard practical experiment using linear law to determine an unknown constant, which in this case is the gravitational acceleration of the Earth. So in the first guided practice, we're going to learn how to transform a non-linear equation into its linear law equivalent. So for this question, we want to express y equals to a times e to the power of bx in the form big Y equals to m big X plus c, where a and b are unknown constants. So let's start with the equation given. Now let me explain the problem. To transform this into the equation big Y equals to m big x plus c, there are some constraints. The big x and the big y need to be independent of the unknown constants a and b, while the gradient and the big y intercept m and c, they need to be independent of the variables small x and small y. So a big problem that we have in this equation is that the b and the x are stuck together as the exponents of e. So what we can do is we can free them up by taking natural log on both sides. So we get ln y equals to ln a times e to the power of bx. This allows us to apply the product rule and split the lons. So now we get ln a plus ln e to the power of bx. Now the natural log and the exponential function will cancel away. And this gives us what ln y equals to bx plus ln a. So we can identify the big Y and the big X here. Big Y is equals to ln Y and big X is equals to X. In this way, both of these functions are independent of the unknown constants A and B. Meanwhile, the gradient M is equals to B and the big Y intercept is ln A. Notice that in this way, 
the functions for the gradient and the big Y intercept are independent of the variables small x and small y. Now it's your turn. Express each of the following equations in the form big Y equals to m big x plus c, where a and b are unknown constants. Pause the video here and give this question a good try. Let's go through the answer. Now I'd just like to caveat that there are multiple solutions for each of these parts, and I'm not going to go through all of them. I'm just going to give you two possible answers for each equation. So for part one, we have the equation y equals to ax squared plus bx. We could divide throughout by x. This will give us a big Y of y over x, a big X, which is still x, a gradient of a, and a big Y intercept of b. The alternative answer is here. I'm just going to go on to part two. In part two, we can rearrange this equation through some cross multiplication. This will give us uh, xy equals to negative bx plus a. So the big Y is equal to xy, the big X is still x, the gradient is negative b, and the big Y intercept is a. Here is an alternative solution. And in the part three, we have y equals to a times b to the power of x. We can take natural log on both sides, rearrange it. We'll get a big Y of ln Y, a big X, which is still X. The gradients will be ln B, and the big Y intercept will be ln A. Of course, you could easily take uh, log base 10, and that will give you an alternative answer. In the second guided practice, we're going to use linear law to derive Kepler's third law experimentally. So I have here a table of planetary measurements from the eight planets in our solar system. Firstly, we have the orbital radius. The orbital radius is roughly the distance, the average distance of a planet from the sun. This is measured in AU, and AU is an astronomical unit, roughly 150 million kilometers, and that is the distance of the Earth from the sun. In the second row, we have the orbital period, T and this is measured in Earth years. This is roughly the time it takes for each of these planets to make a revolution around the Sun. This is why, for to no surprise, the Earth has an orbital radius of 1 AU and a period of 1 year. Our hypothesis is that these two variables, R and T, are connected by some equation R equals to A times T to the power of N. We want to be able to draw a straight line graph and use it to estimate the values of A and N. Our first step is to express the equation in its linear law form, big Y equals to M big X plus C. So what we can do is looking at the equation that we are given, R equals to A times T to the power of N, we can take the natural log on both sides. So this will give us ln r equals to ln a times t to the power of n. Again, we use the product law to split the right-hand side into ln a plus ln t to the power of n. And now we can use the power law to change the power n into a coefficient n. So now we get ln r equals to n ln t plus ln a. We can see that our big Y is ln R and our big X is ln T. Our gradient is going to be N and our big Y intercept will be ln A. So in step two, we need to go back to the table. We need to extend this table with two additional rows for ln R and ln T. So using a calculator, we can evaluate these numbers. Using the numbers that we have just calculated, we move on to step 3. Next, we are going to plot these values on a piece of graph paper. Next, in step 4, we will plot the best fit line through the points that we have just plotted. So each of these orange dots represent a planet, and just nice, a straight blue line passes through all these 8 points. So in step 5, we want to find the gradient and the big y-intercept. 
So we can find the gradient by using the rise over run. So the gradient is roughly 0 0.667. The big Y intercept is where the blue line passes through the big Y axis, the ln R axis. So the C is 0 as we've predicted. And now moving on to step 6, where we want to solve for the unknown constants. So for the first unknown constant n, n is equals to m. So we can say that n is equals to 0 0.667, which is roughly 2 thirds. And a, ln a is equals to the big Y intercept c. So ln a is equals to 0. So a is equals to 1. This allows us to sub back into our original equation. R will be equals to t to the power of 0 0.667. But I'm going to just use 2 thirds. If I rearrange this, r cubed will be equal to t squared. And that is Kepler's third law. The cube of the orbital radius is proportional to the square of the orbital period. And now it's your turn to practice. I have here an interesting scenario of a pandemic. So I have a table that gives you the population of patients P infected by a virus. And this is uh, plotted against time, t, measured in weeks. The variables are modeled by the equation p equals to p naught multiplied by 2 to the power of kt. Draw a straight line graph to estimate the unknown constants p naught and k. Pause the video here and give this question a good try. Now let's go through the answer. So we're going to start with the equation that we are given, p equals to p naught times 2 to the power of kt. So for step 1, we want to express this equation in the form big Y equals to m big X plus c. So we're going to take natural log on both sides. So we'll get ln p equals to ln p naught times 2 to the power of kt. Next, we can use the product law to split the right-hand side to ln p naught plus ln of 2 to the power of kt and use the power law to take out the power kt. So this, when we rearrange, will give us ln p equals to k ln 2 times t plus ln of p naught. So we can see that the big Y is equals to ln p, and the big X is t. The gradient is k ln 2, and the big Y intercept is ln p naught. It's always good to check your answer, make sure that your big Y and big X is independent of the unknown constants k and p naught, and your gradient m and your big Y intercept c are both independent of the variables p and t. So now that we know the functions for big X and big Y, we need to go to step two, which is to extend our table. So we need to add one more row for ln p. So let's calculate the values from the table. This should be what we get. So moving on to step three, we need to plot the values on a piece of graph paper. We can plot those six points. Now in step four, we want to construct the best fit line that passes through all six points. Next in step five, we want to find the gradient and the big Y intercept. The gradient can be found using the rise over run of this right angled triangle. So gradient M is roughly 0 0.993. The big Y intercept C is roughly 2.83 by reading where the blue line cuts the big Y axis. In step six, we want to solve for the unknown constants. We know that the gradient M is equals to K ln two. So we can make K the subject k will be equal to the gradient 0 0.993 divided by ln 2, which is roughly 1.35. We also know that ln p naught is equal to the big Y intercept. So p naught will be equal to e to the power of 2.83. Calculating that, we get roughly 16.9. So these are our answers. Let me end off this practice with two extension questions. One, can we use this graph to extrapolate the number of infected patients in week seven? Explain your reasoning clearly. Question two, can you interpret the significance of one over K and P naught? Now, if you think you have the answer, put your answer in the comment section 
below. Finally, let's go back to where we began, to our success criteria that we set out at the start of the lesson. Are you now able to transform a nonlinear equation into a linear law graph with appropriate functions for big X and big Y? Are you able to determine the expression for the gradients M and the big Y intercept C for a linear law graph? And are you able to construct a linear law graph and use the linear law graph to determine unknown constants from the gradient and the big Y intercepts of the graph? We have come to the end of part two of the linear law series. Stay tuned to the last and final installment, part three, where we will go into how to cheat in linear law. Thank you for your kind attention and have a great day of learning.